tuning into Faces of Gospel TV. I'm your host, Noreen. And I'm Corrine. We are joined by Garwin Gibson, otherwise known as Garnet. Yes. He's a producer, songwriter, musician, husband, and father. Thank you for joining us, Garnet. Thank you for having me. And thank you for having us in your beautiful home today. Thank you for coming. It's very comfy. <laughs> um, so um, we just wanted to, you know, go a little deeper into what you're doing because as a producer, we know that, you know, there's so many things that you have to be flexible with. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about, you know, some things that happen when you're in your studio. Um, what are something? What are some challenges that you face here? Even though you're in your home, I know there's still things that you know that challenge you. Can you just tell us a little bit about what happens behind the scenes? Well, for, first of all, my son, you're the first challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get something done. Um, you just out always over the place um, i remember one time i was recording something right in the middle of it it was so hard for me to get when i finally got it right in the middle of it then he just ran and came and touched the keyboard oh. i'm like oh my god jesus help me but you know if as a musician you work so hard to get something and when you finally get it you know that as easy as that you know what is joke to him Yes. You know, it's actually yeah. so bad for me, so I had to go over and do it again. Um, not that time, other challenges are, you've been working on something and there's no inspiration. You can't get any inspiration to really finish what you're doing. Not, not a lot of people will say that. Is it yeah. like a, a you know? writer's block? Like how many yeah. writers have a writer's yeah. block? Yeah, and sometimes you want to add the correct instrument to a track and you just can't find no inspiration as to what to add or what to play. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what, you know, the instrument that you want to do, but you can't find out, you know, you can't figure out what to, to do. Yeah. And another challenge is when the power would go, you okay. know, right in the middle of a session, the power would go. That's also okay. a big challenge. Wow. The entertainment business can be very demanding. Right? So if you had to choose between your career and your family, who would you choose? Of course, you choose your family. Um, you know, who would be bold enough to say <laughs> they'll choose their career? <laughs> but, um, the, the beauty about my family, um, before I started music or, or before I got married, I was always into music and they knew what I, you know, what it entails, um, the tours. Um, the amount to work, so that wouldn't be a factor right now because if an opportunity comes, I mean, barring an opportunity to be away from my family like for six months, you know, that's something that you would think hard about. You probably yeah. don't want to do that, um, but you know, they know what it entails and what, so they know yes. that this is something that I do, this is my career. You know, but there are boundaries that you set as to what you will do. Of course. And I remember you were saying that sometimes you're doing, you know, you're in the studio and you have no inspiration. When you do have inspiration, where does that come from? Is it from someone? Is it maybe listening to other music? Where does your inspiration come from? Well, the inspiration comes from praying as well. Okay. Um, God gives all inspiration. And, um, you know, sometimes you try to force something um and it's best to just leave it yeah. you know turn the keyboard off don't even think about it sometimes go watch the tv sometimes go outside for a walk sometimes pray sometimes a song mm -hmm. and it may not come that same day but maybe the next day or in my sleep something will come and you get up and like yeah that's what i'm looking for yeah. so i would you know just go and do it but it doesn't always come every time what made you decide to go, you know, start your own production business? One of the thing is, um, I usually just play for people. Um, as a musician, you, you get up, um, I mean, was very young, not necessarily know what, you know, the production aspect of music is. But over time, as you grow in music, you see that um, the music that you play 
somebody actually plays that. And the person who actually plays that is called a producer, right? And I was always the kind of person, I mean, cassette, a lot of people don't know about cassette, but I yeah. usually buy the cassette, I would open it and I'd look at the credits. You know, I'd look to see who play what, who mix, you know, who master it. I don't yeah. know what I was looking at, but I just mm -hmm. wanted to see the persons involved behind the scene. Yeah. So I think from as early on, you know, I really had that desire, even though I may never know that I was going to go into it. But I had the desire to know who was the production team behind it. Mm -hmm. And that was how I think over time it birthed. So let's go back to where it all started. Can you just tell us about what happened? With, you know, was it just a, a moment where you were just like, okay, I want to do music? Was it a passion that was growing? Can you just give us a little backstory of how Garnet started? <laughs> I know we're in the Bronx, right? Yeah. But I know you're not from the Bronx. So can mm -hmm. you just tell us a little bit about back in the day, what happened and how you're here, where you are right now? Okay, so I am from the rural hills of St. Andrew. Um, Stony Hill, go around, roll that side, you know. Beautiful. Yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> um, um, uh, yeah. Community by the name of Cavaliers. Okay. Yeah, Cavaliers. Um, I grew up there actually, and um, my father was a musician. He used to play the guitar at church. Um, we always wanted to play the guitar, um, was never really allowed to play it, but. Um, I think um, as a child continues to grow, um, any parent will recognize that their children are musical. And there's a certain age that you can notice from um, that they're musical. So I used to make bamboo guitars, yeah. you know. Um, I remember, I don't remember how old I was, but I used to make bamboo guitars. And I also remember using, uh, my mom used to have this sugar. Too. You think you know that too? Yeah. So um, I remember my mom had a, I think it was a, either a flour pan, them time, you know, you used oh, to yes. put flour in pan. Yes. yes. And I think the pan started going bad and she threw it outside. And I remember using a stick and I hit the bottom of the pan and I heard two different sounds. Mm -hmm. And the two different sounds that I heard, and this was maybe about maybe 84, I don't even know. but. Or, or maybe earlier than that okay. and um, the two songs that I heard was from a song that I know that I was playing on the radio back then and you know so I could have identified then that I would have been a musician I just didn't know um, I didn't know how to explain it then but I just know that I had a mus musical ear but um, from the bamboo guitar um, doing those kind of stuff there was a guy who was um, playing the drums and we used to invite him to our church when, whenever we have crusades and so forth. So he used to come and I mean when he comes the whole community come out um, to see this guy play the drum set. This yeah. guy was amazing. So you know kids we would say in Jamaica they were all of us. You know, yes. you know yeah. our, you know kids are motivated by what they see. And um, this guy was doing the drums and it's a shame or it was a shame to us that after one week or sometimes, you know, the, the, the crusade would go for two weeks. But it was a shame that after that, he would never come to our church again till next year. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, me and my brothers, along with some of my cousins and so on, we got the tambourines and we we're like, we're going to turn this place up. You know, we're going to. Yeah make sure the same energy is here and um but that time you know church was dominated by the guitar mostly my father being one that plays and um i, I took the jingles off the tambourine you know um yes mommy i did that <laughs> confession yeah. so we took the jingles off the tambourine even brand new tambourines we find wow. a way to twist it wow. you know take the wow. jingles off put them between our feet and you know we get the guava stick, mm -hmm. nice smooth guava stick, and we yeah. play it. And that was how music wow. actually started for me. I think the first musical journey was with the tambourine. Wow. 
wanting to play drum. So I'm I'm surprised I'm doing something else right now. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. And you know, I know you started very early mm -hmm. in life, right? Um, from the time that you decided you were gonna produce music, um, compared to now, what are the differences? that you see in the demands of the quality of your music or what are the differences that just overall what are some differences that you see in music well um one of the difference is how i used to play okay. back then um i remember um just recently listening to an album that i played in 1997 i played on and when i listened to it i'm like oh my gosh i did those things then and when I try to play, uh, I said, okay, let me just see if I could play back that song and how I would play it now. It sounded totally different. Yeah. So if I was to take that song and produce it, it would sound totally different from that 97. Um, so the, the more you, you, you're in music and the more you practice, your knowledge evolves. You don't stay at the same level. And you're actually annoyed with yourself when you listen back to some of the stuff that you play. But, you know, one of my friends actually told me it's a good thing. Um, because there is also a video of me on YouTube when I just started doing something in my home. It's called Lazy Home Shedding. Oh, wow. And believe me, I hate to hear it. Really, but one of my friends said, no, it leave it up there because it shows, you know, how you evolve yes. and so forth. So I leave it up there, not willingly, but I, I leave it up yeah. there. So... seven songs for her already. Um, she'll, um, her name is Andrea Derrick. Um, she will be coming out with, with um, an album soon. There is also um, another lady I'm working on a single for. Um, there is also another gentleman oh, who writes. Stuff. Yeah, stuff. yeah. So I have met about four people now. Wow including my very own project that musician and that producer because some are great some are not so great so what are some things that we should look out for well one of the things that people should always look for is for somebody who's able to take the music to another level mm -hmm. and has a track record of doing so because not everybody who calls themselves a producer is able to really play certain things um, you have to be current, um, when you're looking for somebody to play, there has to be very current and also somebody who can be a coach as well. Um, I remember um, I produced an album in 20, 2012, I think it was 2012 or 2013. I produced an album and um, when I did that, it was one of the most challenging part of my life because I had to coach the person into singing certain things that they're not used to and um you know it was almost like even though the person was much older than i i took them under my wings and i started telling them look this is what i need you to sing this is how your album needs to sound and you know at one point they complained um thinking that you know i didn't you know like i was just overdoing it but when the album came out and people start saying look this sounds good. Who did this? Um, she started calling up my name because what I did for her in terms of pushing her to the limit. I remember one time we were in studio working on something and what I wanted her to sing, she wasn't singing it. And we had to cut the session and I had to, you know, call her out, you know, 
allow her to compose herself. Mm -hmm. You know, we prayed, then she went back in. So this, these are the things that you look for. Mm -hmm. Somebody who has a good tolerance for people, um, love yeah. people, yeah. and also want your album to be the best. Not just to grab a money, you know, mm -hmm. oh, somebody coming in with the album, I want to grab money. No, no, no. Somebody who will be able to take your album to the next level yes. and to compete with everything else out there. You, you sound like a, pro a producer wears many hats. Yes. So that's a challenging job, so you have to be very flexible and willing to make changes, step forward or step back. Yes, yes. Well, so we want to thank you so much. Thank, um, you. thank you so much for joining us. Um, and again, we have here Mr. Gawain Garnet mm -hmm. Gibson, right, from yes. Garnet Works Production. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a pleasure. We're looking for more in the oh, future. Yeah. And if you it, and <laughs> <laughs> we're here in this cozy home, and it's such a pleasure. No. It's such a pleasure, and um, we are looking for so much more growth. We're looking forward to seeing the growth that you Amen. will continue to do um, in our in this industry. Amen. Yep, Amen. because it's positive. It's a positive environment, and we hope the next time we interview you, it will be in a bigger studio. Amen. Right? Amen. We Amen. know better things. Amen. We know because <laughs> someone has told me about you know speaking it into you know Amen. using Amen. the right, right phrases. We yeah. know the next time the when next we come time, here, yeah. right? It will be bigger Great and better. Things. Great Greater things, things will be happening. Amen. Thank you again so Thank much. You well.